All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Austin Kwasinski, and today I'm here for this exciting Friday Family Arts. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at some of the surrealist paintings by uh, Salvador Dali, and we're going to be creating our, our own fun elephants. So I'm going to show you an example uh, here. Uh, these elephants are not like the ones that we typically see in, say, a zoo, and they have long extended legs. Uh, so I'm going to show you some of the works of a surrealist painter. So what surrealism is, in a nutshell, is basically unlocking the creative potential of the unconscious mind. Or in other words, kind of what we see in dreams. So it's not based off reality, but you can do some pretty cool things. So one of the first pieces that I want to uh, demonstrate is this, is The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali in 1934. As you can see, we can see uh, numerous clocks are being depicted, but they're not like typical clocks that we would see in everyday life. They're warped and starting to melt um, because of the heat of inside this piece. And clocks, don't uh, they don't do that typically. So this is one of the things that surrealism uh, taps into. Uh, here's another one here by Salvador Dali, and we're going to be taking a closer look at this painting, uh, The Elephants in 1948. Now, the elephants, as you can see, uh, they have long, limbering limbs, uh, but elephants, they don't have that typically. Uh, what's really cool about this piece is how Dali uh, uses scale and shows uh, we have a figure here right in the foreground and then compared to these long, limbering elephants. So we really get a sense of the size of these creatures. So today, uh, here's an example piece that I did uh, for the demo, but we're going to be making our own. Now, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to draw our elephant, and we're going to draw the top portion of it, and then we're going to extend the limbs uh, to as long as uh, we choose. And it's going to give us a real surrealism look. Now, so the materials that you guys will need for this assignment are uh, a pencil, uh, some markers for uh, drawing the elephant. I have a Sharpie, but a fine tip would probably work better. Uh, an eraser here. Uh, we have some pastels. So as you can see in the demo, uh, we use it to kind of give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of shading, which you can add to that. And some construction paper. I have the yellow one here because it makes it easier to see when um, with the camera, but you can use any of these uh, warmer colors. And the reason why we do warmer colors is because we want to emulate uh, this piece over here, so we're gonna get the nice, nice warm tones. All right, guys, let's get started. I'm gonna use yellow so it's easier to see on camera. Uh, first and foremost, when we were starting to draw our elephant, uh, we want to start with basic shapes. So for the first one, we're gonna start with a nice oval shape. I'll show you an example here. Uh, this shape, if we break it down and simplify it, it's going to be a nice oval shape. And then here, a circle for the head as well. So we're going to start with that right away. So let's go in the center of our piece here. Let's get a nice, nice oval here. Like so. All right. So that's step one. We got our nice oval shape there. Now for step two, we're going to need a head. So we're going to make the head about this length here, and we're going to need a nice circle for that. So all we're doing right now is doing our construction lines, which is going to make it easier to draw our elephant in total. Uh, so we have two basic shapes, circle here and an oval for the body. Now we're going to divide this head into four parts like so. This is going to make it easier to draw like that. So elephants have a long, long tusk, so we're going to take that, and drop it down almost like a C shape, like there. And then the tusk is going to come from this end. And go like that. All right. So our next step: elephants have big, droopy ears. So we're gonna give them some ears here. So starting from this point, and then coming from this point, it's about even on each side. We're gonna do a nice, big, almost like an oval shape too. It's like an oval slash circle, like so. All right. 
So the next step over here is going to add the tail. And then we have two legs for the front, like so. So this is just a guideline. We're going to use and going to make the legs much, much larger and extend them out. But as you can see, we can already tell that this has the shapes of an elephant. Um, and it's basic shapes. So now all we're going to do is we're going to build on top of that. So once we got that, we're going to add we're going to add the eye here. It might be hard to see on stream, but that's okay. We're going to go over it in marker anyways. So we're going to add that eye. And elephants have some nice wrinkles in there. So we're going to add some like that. Yeah, if you guys can't quite tell what that looks like, something like that. But we'll go over it and make sure you'll be able to see it. Now we're going to extend the tusks out. So have this line here. And basically the line that we created for the tusk is the middle. So we want to go over it like so. And using our trusty eraser, we can use that to erase our construction line. go. Now on for the trunk. Send it down like so. And it curves at the bottom. Add to that trunk a bit more too. There you go. And it has a nice curve on the end. There you go. All right. Next, we should extend. We're going to add another trunk here, too. Let's define this head shape a bit more. So we have the base circle, but now we're going to have a little bit sharper lines to really see that forehead there. So we have one going right here and then another one going straight like that. And then with the ears, we have the base of it, but we're going to make it a little bit more floppy. So we're going to come down on an angle like this, right down here. And we're going to have it curve. We're going to make it a little bit floppier. So we're reaching outside. This, this is our base circle. We're going to reach a little bit outside of it and come in so, and we're going to have a droop like that. See, now it's got nice big floppy ears. And then we can go ahead and erase the base of the body like that. There you go. All right, so now that we got the head base, we're going to have to start to do uh, the legs here. So I'm going to extend. I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this a little bit rounder too. I'm going to start to extend the leg, going down this way. And it's going to come up from about this point here, if you can see that. And going down about to there. And again, once we're done with that, we can erase this line here. So this process of doing it this way, of building out our sketch, makes it very easy because once we have those simple shapes, all we're doing is adding to it. Um, we can do that the same with a human as well. So I'll, I'll just flip on the other side and show you guys. So to say if we were to start with a human, we're going to simplify uh, the basic form. So we have the head here. I'm going to do it in, in Sharpie so you guys can see. Head, and then we have the torso, right, which is a long oval. And then we have... Here, the shoulders are going to be here, here, right? And essentially all this is, is basically a stick figure. At its simplest, that's the hips there. Simplest roots, right? And the leg, and then these are the arms again. So that's your basic human figure. And then once we start to add that, we can start to add all all the muscles and all 
everything that goes on top of it, right? So that's essentially what we're doing with our elephant here. We're simplifying the forms at first, and then we can continue to work towards and start to build on top of it. Uh, I'm going to go over the elephant uh, with the marker in just a minute here, but let's let's finish out this sketch. So we have the other leg here that we want to add on the bottom, like so. But this is the reason most artists do that, because trying to tackle a fully detailed uh, elephant right off the get-go, that's very intimidating, very daunting for a lot of artists. Right. All right, so we're going to start to add this. And there's going to be a little bump right here, because the bottom of this is going to start to descend like that. Uh, let's add this base leg in there as well. So it's going to start from about this point, if you can see. Come down. And it's going to curve like so. All right. And then starting from the end of our oval here, we'll have that back leg come in. Like so. And we also have this one from the bottom. And we'll, cur we'll curve that in. We'll make that like that. Okay, we have this tail curving too, so we can add this tail. And at the very bottom, add it like that. All right, so now we have our base elephant for the most part. Let's see, we're going to extend this neck and attach this here. Now we're going to go over it with uh, our fine liner and we'll erase all those construction lines we don't want to see. Just go in there and erase all those. There you go, make it nice and neat. That one goes there. All right, let's go over this guy. So we're going to have the top top here. All right. And in the inking phase, we can start to add a little bit more details as well. You can do that beforehand, but I'm just going to do it while I'm inking, just because it uh, will kill two birds with one stone. Here you go. Okay, we've got the first one, second tusk. So now that's starting to show a little bit better. I'll show you the eye too of what I did there. So it's down up. There, hopefully, hopefully you can see that a bit more. There we go. Okay, cool. And now coming down around here. So the interesting thing about elephants is that in this tusk, there's a lot of wrinkles on this side. And the reason for that is because it's actually turning. So this part is extended, but this part's turning in space and all the skin is starting to overlap with one another. I'll flip over and show you what I'm talking about. So in a human body, it's the same thing. We have this arc here. So this is the human tor torso. We start to turn, this is straight, but then we have this layer of skin that starts to bunch up right here is because that's going to be turning in space. So very similar to our trunk, I'm going to turn this human into a trunk, right? Our trunk's going this way and the folds of the skin are starting to turn like that. So that's why I'm adding all these little small details there. If this trunk was fully extended, the the skin wouldn't be folding like that. There you go. All right, let's add this. We started at the legs, but we didn't finish the bottom. We just started it because I'm going to show you what we're going to do after. There you go. see. OK. 
Okay. Do this. That's going to be coming from the second leg here. Watch that extend. Let's see. We can add a little bit of wrinkles in here too. Why not? This is our tail. Perfect. All right, so we have the base of our elephant done and covered. I'm going to just zoom in and just see. There you go. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at our reference photo of Salvador Dali's piece and see, see how long the legs are there. We're going to start to add that to our guy. So following, if we're following this one to Salvador Dali's, there's going to be a little joint here. So I'm going to extend it like so. Now you can make these legs as long as you want to. And we'll make it super long just so you see what I'm talking about. So we're going to just extend them down a bit. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a bump there. So let's, let's add that little detail. So I'm going to extend that out. Like so. And now we can, now this is the fun part, we can make it as long. Look how skinny it starts to get at the very bottom, almost to a point where you can't even see the feet. So let's add that to ours. So let's go all the way down. Very, 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 very skinny like so. All the way down. This is such an interesting contrast between this big burly animal and then these legs are going to cross over like so. Right. Down. I'm going to take a point. He also has a little bump here, so I'm going to add a little bump for the back leg. Why not? And change the direction a bit like so. All right, let's go ahead and draw that in with our fine liner. So there's a little bump there. Little bump. There we go. And then we're going to extend that all the way down. Don't worry if it's not exactly what your lines are like. We're still going to get that idea. We'll do this one first because it's over top. All the way down. Now, this might be hard to do get these lines super straight when you're going for such a long distance. But if you start to drag your hand down like so, you start to do it really fast, then your then your line control will get better. Add that little bump there. And down to the very bottom. So we'll close those off from the bottom. There we go. Now we have our long burly elephant. Look at that. What look at the difference between what this does, or well, probably even shorter like that. So that's how you typically see your elephants to this. And that's kind of the whole point of surrealism is bending the expectations of what we know in reality. So now, uh, as you can see, Dolly has a lot of this open space and then a very limited backdrop right here. So let's add that in. So let's go. Add that in. He's got a little bit of I'll show you on there. It's got a little bit of mountain ranges there, so we can add that to ours as well. And it starts to go like so. He has nothing really in the foreground as far as uh, the landscape is considered, but he also has a person. So I'm just going to do a little stick figure just to show you what I mean. But even adding this guy, as small as he is, does a lot. Because now when we compare this picture to the guy down below, we can see the scale of this animal. So let's, let's add him in there. Just like that. And give him little feet, too. All right, let's go over our basic backdrop here. Now this is totally up to you what you want to do 
with your animal scene. Now that we got the basic animal construction done, right? You can totally add whatever you want to. Um, as you can see in the original one, uh, Dolly has a nice blanket over top, so we can add that to ours if we want to, like so. Uh, simple trick is just to do little frills like that on the edge, and we'll have a little bit of a rim there. There we go, we have a nice blanket. We could put whatever pattern we want to on that. And then he also has these like little stone stone markings. So let's see if we can draw that in as well. But with yours, you don't have to add this in. You can add whatever you'd like to. But I just want to show you some options of what you can do. There you go. This goes out like that. All right. It's going to be shaded on the side there. And they'll have a little bit of a base. All right, cool. So now that we got that done, uh, we can go ahead. We're going to grab a spare piece of paper just because this can get messy. And we're going to grab our pastel here. Look at that. My fingers are already getting dirty. I'm going to start to rub. I just want here. Now it's nice and loose, we can start to get our fingers dirty. Start to really go for it. We can add a little bit of color to this piece. All right, Look at that. getting all messy here. So if you want to take a look of how to do this, in this one, it starts from really red at the top, and then it starts to go to an orange, and then it starts to go to a yellow, so a nice little gradient. It's mostly red at the top, a little bit of orange at the bottom, and a little bit of yellow for that nice warm sunset. So let's, let's keep adding. This does use a lot of pastel, but it's fun. There you go. So typically, Near the top of the corners are going to be the more dark. Like so. I start to bring that in there. So get fun with this, get get messy, try different colors, see what you like. And then for the elephant itself, I'm going to probably do this sharp purple. If you can see that. Yeah, you can see that cool. So I want to start to shade kind of closer to the bottom and leave the top a little bit. And I'll show you what that does. So we're going to start with the bottom first. There you go. It's a bit easier to shade this guy. So as you can see, if I'm shading closer towards the bottom, we're starting to get a little bit of a rim light from the top, uh, which we're using the yellow. And the rim light helps establish the form of our animal here. There we go. And we can start to go nice and long. Don't worry about going outside the lines for the legs because they start to get really skinny. But we'll just do a nice, nice long line there. Get that sense. Cool. Need a little bit more of that purple. Nice and dark. Ooh, I like that. That's another thing too, if it's, there's a darker area of your thing that you're trying to shade, it's going to be more in shadow. Let's see if I can do that again, get nice, nice and dark here. There we go. So basically, basically like that, and then the bottom. See, Dolly has nice, nice browns in there, so let's add a bit of browns. So I'm not going to take the whole time doing this, but uh, on your own, guys, feel free to get this thing messy. Have fun with it. Like so. There you go. And let's 
add a little bit more brown. Give a little bit of texture to that ground area. Like so. And there you go, guys. So this has been our surrealist elephant that we made. Uh, we started with the basic shapes of constructing, and then we started to add uh, the skin over top and, and add the little finer details. Um, I'm going to add one more little thing just because, let's see what color I want to use. Let's use this nice blue. Add one more little thing to finish it off. Add a nice blue. There you go. All right, cool. So that's going to finish it up, guys. Uh, well, I hope you had fun doing this special Friday Family Arts. Uh, we have another one coming up uh, August 14th, which we'll be making our own flipbook animation, which is going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited to show you guys how to do that. Um, until next time, guys, please tag the reach in your creations and let us know uh, if you enjoyed this lesson. And I'll see you guys later.